So continuing the series of small antennas, hidden or tiny for indoors, I decided to try one of these mini whips. Now, if you Google for mini whip, you either get this antenna or some other instruments, which we don't talk about on YouTube. And this is a Chinese cheap copy of a PA0 RDT mini whip, but I thought I'd get it to try it out. It's supposed to work at very low frequencies as well. It's tiny, as you can see, um, but I did read some reviews where people said it fried the front end of their receiver because it put voltage out from the power supply section. That's this thing, that's the uh, power feed into the coax. And um, so I thought I would check to make sure that this is not putting out nine volts into the receiver input, and it was. And <clears throat> if we look at this thing, I thought I would check that maybe it didn't have a DC blocking capacitor, but it does have a DC blocking capacitor which I'm going to try to point to. It's very, very small, and it's located around about here. So that's a DC blocking capacitor to prevent any of the DC supply that goes to the antenna from going into the receiver. Um, the problem was that there was nine volts coming out of here, so I thought maybe the capacitor's gone short circuit or something wrong with it. So I tested it with a multimeter. Here's one I prepared earlier. And you can see the resistance between the two ends of that DC blocking capacitor is zero ohms which is not a good sign because it'll put voltage out through this connection to the receiver and cause damage. So I thought um, maybe there's some solder underneath that surface mount capacitor that's making a short circuit. So I decided to, using my trusty soldering iron that is, how old is that? Uh, 50 years old or 40? Probably 40 years old. I would remove it. So I took off the capacitor and in the next picture you can see that there wasn't solder under the capacitor. The problem is that there's actually printed circuit track under the capacitor that shouldn't be there because this line comes from the antenna side. That's the DC blocking capacitor and this goes to the receiver. And somebody, when they designed the circuit layout, forgot to break the track there, unfortunately. Now I could send it back to the supplier under guarantee and ask my money back, but it was so cheap. And being a bit of an experimenter, I thought I would fix it, which isn't easy. So using my trusty scalpel, which is uh, not the best. I cut through that track. So it looks like this. It's not very pretty, but now there's no DC connection between those two points. And then I soldered the capacitor back on as best I could, with not having a microscope because it is tiny. But now there's um, no connection measured with the multimeter between the two ends of the capacitor, which means that the nine volts shouldn't appear with this connector. I'll test it before I plug it into my expensive receiver though. So I avoided an expensive accident by not trusting the design and testing things first, and I'm so glad I did. Let's see if it actually works now. Well, having established that there's no DC coming out of this adapter for the power feed, so it's safe to plug into the receiver. I tried it, and uh, there's no signal. <laughs> Here's the antenna with its amplifiers. I used to use 2N3866s a long time ago for the output stage on. I forgot what frequencies, but it was a little used in transmitters. So this is obviously a, a pre-amplifier with a high intercept point, sort of high dissipation class A, and there's a J310, was it? FET input stage, but it's dead. It can't receive anything. And when you connect the power, you'd expect the noise floor to rise on the receiver. It doesn't. So probably there's design errors in this too. And I don't think I have time to take it apart and find them and correct them all, having done one on the other power feeding board. Probably it's time to give up. Got a nice piece of cable there with SMA plugs on it for 12 euros and uh, the rest looks like trash unless you have uh, any ideas about what the problem could be or you've had similar experiences. So please comment and let me know what you think about this uh, mini whip antenna based on the PA0RDT design.